And now a leader of Yemen's Ansarullah movement says that Israel, Britain, and the United States are the masterminds behind the Saudi war against his country. Abdul Malik Al Houthi said that Washington and Tel Aviv chose Riyadh to shoulder the costs and responsibility of the Yemen conflict. He blamed Saudi Arabia and its allies for unknowingly following an Israeli agenda. Marking the sixth anniversary, the start of the Saudi onslaught, Houthi accused the Saudi led coalition of deliberately targeting civilian gatherings and infrastructure. He said that the coalition is paying terrorists to attack the Yemeni people. Houthi said that innocent civilians are bearing the brunt of the Saudi led war which he described as an inexcusable crime. International calls have so far failed to stop Riyadh's devastating onslaught, which has killed tens of thousands of Yemeni civilians, many of them women and children. And joining us now for this news review is Saeb Shah, the author of Middle East Affairs Expert, joining us from Belfast, and Mr. Firas al Najim, manager at Canadian Defenders for Human Rights, joining us out of Ottawa, Ontario. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you both to the program here. I guess I'm going to start with you, Mr. Saeb Shah, there, joining us out of Belfast. Your thoughts, six years anniversary, a devastating onslaught on the people of uh, Yemen. Your thoughts on the players involved and where their interests lie? Uh, the players are very clear. Uh, their interest is clearer than that. Uh, the the United States of America, uh, since the revolutionaries in Yemen tried to take uh, their country from the clutches of the Saudis' American domination, uh, waged a war using the Saudis uh, uh, to uh, re to occupy Yemen and bring it back to the backyard of the Saudis. So uh, the um, the Americans can maintain their control in the region because Yemen is gifted with uh, such a geopolitical position, uh, the the British Empire used from the port of Eden to control its, uh, its empire from Australia to India. Uh, so uh, from that, you will understand how vital Yemen for an empire like the United States of America and the Zionist entity uh, to control. They used the 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 Saudis, uh, the Emiratis as proxies uh, to launch this war in behalf of them. To, so the Saudis. Uh, used their financial resources and bought weapons and uh, achieving, trying to achieve the goals of the United States of America. Uh, uh, apart from that, Yemen's have untapped uh, resources of natural resources, oil of gas, which is a huge. Uh, the Americans report itself uh, expected there is reserves more uh, than uh, many, many Gulf states. So there is other thing as well if we notice years ago uh, when the Saudis took over the two islands in the Red Sea, uh, Tehran and Sanafir from Egypt, uh, and that as well, which is the uh, 1967 war started from that flashpoint when Nasser blocked uh, from that uh, island the former Egyptian revolutionary President Nasser against the Zionist trade, uh, which they used to have supplies of oil coming from the Shah of Iran to them. The, so the Saudis and the Israelis looking at these uh, two islands now to make a bridge so the Zionist entity can cross from occupied Palestine to the holy lands of Saudi Arabia uh, and in the aim of in the future as well to uh, besiege and surround Iran. Uh, this is one of the things and they want to use Yemen in the future, especially Hadramaut, in case of the uh, Strait of Hormuz, they blocked it so the Saudis can uh, as well import, uh, export, sorry, its oil and gas and that to the energy, to the international market from Hadramaut in Yemen. So there's a lot of complicated issues in here, but it's very, very clear who are the players. The Zionist entity, United States of America, backed by Britain, and the Saudis and Emiratis are proxies no more. Thank you. And Mr. Firas Al-Najim, welcome to the program, but hope you're safe and doing well out there in Ontario. Uh, your initial thoughts on this, and if you can, also throw uh, at some point, if you can't touch upon the fact that uh, Western uh, corporate media, uh, particularly news outlets, over six years of devastating uh, onslaught on the Yemeni people, rarely hear the word Yemen or the atrocities taking place. Why? Um, best regards to Press TV staff and all viewers. Um, I'm here in Ottawa in front of the Saudi embassy here. Um, as a human rights organization first on the sixth year anniversary going into the seventh year we totally condemn this war and we stand against the arms deals 
especially by the Canadian government, that promotes human rights and equality and justice and peace all the time. This is what we hear from the Prime Minister and his associates. And they are having the largest arms deal in Canadian history still processing and still being produced to the Saudi war criminal regime that has caused the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. And this humanitarian crisis is getting worse and worse. And like you said, mainstream media is not covering this because it's not in their interest, because these, a lot of these governments in the world are unfortunately continuing to arm the Saudi regime, and these arms are all being used against civilians, women, children, hospitals, funeral homes, anything you can think about that is civilian, the Saudis destroy it. Even, even graveyards, you know, of, of, of holy figures, they have bombed them five, six, seven times, and they continue to do that. Now, it's not in their interest to highlight this issue of Yemen, because then it goes back to who's supporting Yemen and who's not stopping the Yemeni war. How come the Canadian government, how come all these governments out there that know it's the worst humanitarian crisis, how come they're not pushing for a UN resolution all these years to put sanctions and stop the war? There's countries with veto power in there that speak day and night about human rights, about equality, about safeguarding the world, and they don't do nothing, right? And they're focusing on China, they're focusing on Iran, they're focusing on Russia, putting sanctions on these countries. And really, these countries are not the ones that are causing these human rights abuses. If anything, they're supporting usually the countries they're supporting, they're supporting the countries that are oppressed, that need assistance. So, you know, this is, this is very big hypocrisy on a high level, and it needs to stop. And people in the world say not stay, stay solid. You know, on social media, everybody has a role. Everybody has a hand in this battle, because injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. And these arms deals are the biggest black, black and bloody stain in the history of these countries. Because what we want, here, we want Canada to stop arming Saudi Arabia because they are becoming accomplices in these war crimes. You don't have to literally shoot somebody to be an accomplice. You can help support a crime. You can help engineer a crime. And that's exactly what's happening. The, log the logistical support that's happening from the British, from the Americans, from the French, and from all these different governments, right? There's a security guard behind me. You know, uh, this embassy right now is not operating as it usually does because they, they would have caused something as the Khashoggi case, you know? They don't care. Anybody that works against the Saudi interests, they're willing to cut him into pieces, they're willing to kill him. This is the Saudi regime's nature. They've imprisoned any opposition members, even within their own families, they put them all in prisons, even the scholars. This is the Saudi regime. And there is no justification in any way to support this regime in any way possible, especially in a war where these people don't even have a history of having wars. I mean, they, we don't, we don't, we, they have, what wars have they been involved in? Not much, right? Only killing their own citizens inside Saudi Arabia, in the Qafif region, in the, in the Eastern region, or invading Bahrain to suppress the oppressed Bahrainis when they were peacefully protesting and standing up for their rights. So when you see this type of human rights record, you cannot continue to arm them. When we need to stop this arms deals as soon as possible and, it's, and, and, and have major and strong sanctions against the Saudi regime. This is not acceptable and we cannot tolerate these war crimes and these Yemeni people will be victorious. Tomorrow is a big day for the Yemeni people. They will come out in millions and march and stand together and they have defeated the Saudi regime and they have defeated all these advanced weapons because the will and the unity of the people will defeat all these other uh, obstacles. Thanks, Tiraz. And Mr. Saeb Shath, we have only about a minute left. I'm going to let you get the last uh, final thoughts in. But Saeb, if you could uh, touch on the fact that Joe Biden came in saying he, this war has to end. We're going to stop uh, providing weapons for this uh, war to the Saudis. But guess what? If you really want it to end, is there any doubt in my mind or yours that it could? this war could wind down in less than 24 hours if Washington really wanted Riyadh to pump the brakes? Tell us what's going on. Your final thoughts, please. If the U.S. the U.S. wants to stop this war, since its proxies are losing it, and they want to throw, uh, uh, because if we notice lately, the the Yemenis uh, are winning the war in a big way. They are nearly taking over uh, Ma'rib, which is the last stronghold of the pro-Saudi forces and Al Qaeda and Daesh. 
uh, without it, the U.S. cannot win this war. And the, uh, the Houthis and the Revolutionary Committee and the Yemeni army are moving in, taking it. And as well, this Marib, it have a huge oil resources which can uh, destroy their blockade. The Yemenis will have oil and energy. Uh, uh, Biden uh, uh, and the Oliver Branch comes uh, uh, to the uh, uh, that because of the de, de facto defeat, and it's an old uh, United Nations uh, plan. Who are they uh, sending messages through Oman to the Houthis? Uh, Biden wants to talk, but they are lying. Uh, this war is completely an American and Israeli and a British war. If the Americans want to stop it, it's they can take a decision straight away to do that. And the only way they are they gonna stop this war when they are defeated on the ground, and this is why they are bringing the United Nations uh, uh, roadmap to peace from last year to try to put preconditions okay. in the Houthis to stop the war before they negotiate, and that won't happen because the Houthis and the Revolutionary Committees, the Yemeni army, are winning right now and devastating the Saudis with their drones and a precise uh, rockets, right. which is talking strategic uh, position in Saudi Arabia. Gentlemen, thank you both. We are, time has gotten the better of us. Always a pleasure to have you both on. Saeed Shoth, author and Middle East affairs expert, joining us from Belfast, and Firaz al Najim, manager at Canadian Defenders for Human Rights, joining us from Ottawa, Ontario. Gentlemen, thank you both, and do stay safe of yours. That's a wrap for the segment of your Press TV's News Review program. Thank you for tuning in, and goodbye for now.